In one year, about 75 people die in New Mexico due to domestic violence, and three quarters of those deaths are from guns. Tonight, Target 7 investigates why a new law designed to prevent these tragedies is so rarely used by police and prosecutors. Here's Faith Ibono. In August, police were called to Kimberly Yacon's home. He has a history of accusing me of having men over. According to court records, she eventually filed this restraining order saying her husband had a shotgun. She was co-owner of this restaurant in Las Cruces and she was worried about her husband. Weeks later, she would be shot and killed. Six months earlier, police were called to their home over the same issue. This has been going on way too long. Okay. And it's just, it's come to a head tonight, or today, when he told me he was going to kill me. We're here basically just to keep the peace, make sure that you guys aren't killing each other and that, you know, we can prevent something from worse happening, you know. But the but. worst did happen. On a Saturday night, Kimberly's stepson made this call to 911. She said, what do you mean she's dead? I don't, I don't know, she has a lot of According to court documents, Robert shot and killed Kimberly. Prior to her killing, she filed for divorce and restraining order after restraining order, but there is one thing she did not file. USA! The red flag gun law was one of the most controversial pieces of legislation to be debated in the roundhouse. We're gathering on the platform of we the people. Eventually, the law was passed and enacted in July 2020. It reads law enforcement can petition the court to have someone's firearms be seized for a year if there is a quote, credible threat. There has to be a triggering event. Someone has to take an affirmative step uh, to, to put that red flag law into place, and it doesn't sound like that happened here. Target 7 combed through court records. We found in the two years the law has been enacted, there are only 11 cases in which prosecutors or law enforcement filed a petition on behalf of a domestic violence victim. Eight cases resulted in the gun being taken away. We asked if more petitions could have been filed. Yes, of course. Of course I do. And that's why the problem has to be addressed. Representative Damon Eli sponsored the bill. He now wants to change the bill in the next legislative session so victims can go straight to the courts. But I'm really hoping that my colleagues, particularly on the Senate side, will take a hard look at this and say, we need to make this easier. Advocates and legislators here at the Roundhouse tell us domestic violence victims are unaware that the law even exists. We need to get more and more domestic violence advocates trained. Sheila Lewis plans to teach police officers about the red flag law. Right now they don't see that it's effective. It's, that it's, not, it's just not coming up in their minds to help victims. You get your domestic violence packet. Um, we do have some victim advocates on there that can maybe point out some resources for you. I have Target 7 combed through hours of lapel video taken from February and August when police were called to Kimberly Acone's home. Not once did deputies mention the red flag gun law. And unfortunately, the way the law was drafted, it's confusing. Kimberly Yacon was killed in Doña Ana County. Kim Stewart is the sheriff there. She was the only law enforcement official in the state to speak publicly supporting the red flag law back in 2019. But there has only been one red flag petition filed in Doña Ana County in the past two years. We asked the sheriff if she believed more could have been filed in her county. No. No, I don't. All this red flag law is based on imminent threat. Man, that's a lift, isn't it? To, to say that because we've been out on a domestic this morning, uh, that we could swear that this is an imminent threat. That's a real tough assessment to make very uh, quickly. For Target 7, I'm Faith Ibuanu. Robert Yaconi was shot when sheriff's deputies took him into custody. He's been charged with first-degree murder.